Hello everyone, today I'm going to be giving my speech on the uh, increase in pollution. In 2020, the uh, BP Statistical Review for World Energy released an article stating that 84% of the world's energy consumption is fossil fuels alone, and that's a really scary number. If we continue to use fossil fuels, we'll not only deplete our Earth's natural resources, but damage the Earth in her entirety as well too. To begin with, let's define what fossil fuels are before we get into the effects and possible solutions as well too. Uh, fossil fuels are the remains of animals and plants from a prehistoric era that have been reduced to a hydrocarbon chain. And in an article published by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 2022, um, they go on to define that hydrocarbons are uh, typically found as liquids or and solids and are very are, have a very high combustion rate, and that obviously leads them to being very good for fuel. Um, and with an increase in population also grows an increase in demand as well, too. And the global, uh, the global demand for fossil fuels has doubled every 20 years. And some of the causes for fossil fuels, I'll only name a few of them as some of like, the main contributors. Uh, they're anywhere ranging from vehicle emissions, uh, byproducts of manufacturing and power generating, fumes created from chemical production, and uh, oil and natural gases uh, used to heat homes. In an article published by the National Institute of Environmental Sciences uh, titled Air Pollution and uh, Health, uh, they go on to list some of the solutions that anyone can do. You don't have to have a PhD in sciences to be able to do some of this. It could be anywhere from, uh, you know, not you know not driving your car as much or reducing the amount of time that you're driving your car around, uh, avoid using gas-powered uh, gardening equipment, eliminating the fi uh, use of your fireplace, and uh, avoid burning leaves, trash, and other materials as well too. And pollution has many uh, has a hold in many of our facets of life. Uh, in an article published by uh, Fergus Green entitled The Anti-Fossil Fuel uh, Norms, uh, published in 2020, he goes on to say that fossil fuels produce uh, hazard air pollutants uh, such as nitrogen oxide, mercury, carbon monoxide, and sulfur dioxide, which are very harmful to humans. Air pollution uh, has also caused uh, eutrophication and acid rain, uh, which damages crops and forests. I'll go on to define uh, eutrophication in just a brief moment. Acid rain is defined as the alteration in the pH level of rain. The normal uh, pH level of water is 9 on the pH scale, but when uh, in acid rain, it drops down to a 3, which is the same acidity as vinegar. And eutroph uh, eutrophication is the excessive nutrients or other uh, pollutants uh, in any body of water, whether it's a lake, ocean, or stream, whatever it may be. An example of this was given in an article uh, written by the Union of Concerned Scientists down, uh, back in 2017, titled Coal and Water Pollution. They go on to describe uh, what the coal plants or how the coal plants use water. Uh, coal plants take water in from a water source, whether it's a lake or whatever else, heat it up and then discharge it back. And the wastewater that comes out is generally 20 to 25% hotter than when it was received. And this causes fertility problems and also um, increased heart rates, which can lead to cardiovascular problems in all marine life. Um, we have a widespread use of fossil fuels, and that has caused a, a large decay in not only our, our ozone, but has led to a lot of global warming as well, too. In an article written by uh, Suzanne Callery, uh, who is actually a NASA scientist, uh, she goes on to um, say how... Uh, the overproduction of greenhouse gases such as carbon, uh, carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide are resulting in the increased re uh, destruction of the ozone layer. And uh, the, uh, the deterioration of our ozone results in uh, increased radiation on Earth's surface levels, which is a very, very scary idea. And in an article written by Carlos uh, Felgueras uh, in 2018 titled Pollution of the Ozone, um, he goes on to explain that the increased exposure and the UV radi radiation has numerous effects on people, whether it's, you know, different types of skin cancer all the way to, you know, eye cataracts and immune deficiency disorders. And in a supporting article uh, by uh, the Union of uh, Concerned Scientists written back in 2017, they go on to uh, say how the increase of uh, UVB has reached Earth's surfaces and it has been proven. 
There have been many lab studies shown that uh, UVB uh, rays have uh, caused non-melanoma skin cancer and play a major role in uh, malignant melanoma development. And such effects can only be reduced when uh, an alternate source of energy can be uh, found or utilized in a widespread fashion. To sum up, uh, we have an over-reliance on fossil fuels, which ends up damaging uh, the environment and the ozone. With the depletion of the ozone layer comes a, a varying uh, array of you know, health problems and many other things as well, too. Now, this isn't something to be truly afraid of at the moment, as there are still many things that we can do to either halt the progress or eliminate pollution altogether. And uh, they're anywhere from, you know, riding your bike to work all the way to developing a new clean and renewable energy source. There are many things that anyone from all walks of life is able to do. There is no action that is insignificant. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.